morning. Let me welcome all of you to the service today, especially our guests and visitors. We're delighted to have you with us as we worship God together. Let me call your attention to the work, red worship register, one in each pew. Please take it and let us know you're here by signing in. And while you're doing that, I call your attention to some announcements in the bulletin. Uh, note that the men's Bible study will be held again on Tuesday morning at 8 o'clock. And next Saturday is Christmas Eve. I know you knew that. Uh, but at 7 o'clock, we're going to have worship service. And that's a very special service, so I hope you will join us at that time and, and bring your friends. Um, Sunday morning, we will have worship service at 11 o'clock, one service at 11, and we'll meet in the fellowship hall. It'll be a time of, uh, of worship and celebration. So you come, you can wear your pajamas or your gown or your party clothes from the night before if you want. So come and let us celebrate Christmas Day with that one service. Please note the other activities and plans and make your own plans accordingly. I call your attention to the call to worship printed in the bulletin. God calls us to worship. We gather to worship the Lord our God. God calls us to celebrate. We gather to celebrate the promise of the Messiah. God calls us to prepare again for the coming Savior. Our hymn is 133, O Come, All Ye Faithful.
Let your light shine. Let your spirit soar. Throw open your mind, hand open your heart. Here it comes, love. It shines in the darkness, it sings in the shadows. It will not cower and cannot be contained. It was the hope of the saints, the call of the prophets. It was the fire in the belly of the Baptists and the courage of Mother Mary. Lamp in the window, beacon on the hill, star in the night sky. Love, you lead us home. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, we light a candle for love. May it light the way. Please join me in prayer. Lord our God, we give you thanks for the opportunity to worship. We need to worship. We need communion with you. We need you in our lives in this season of celebrating your love. Hear our prayers and accept our worship, we pray. We pray in the name of Jesus who gave us his prayer saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hear the reading from God's holy word from the ninth chapter of Isaiah, verses 2 through 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and of peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne, and over his kingdom, establish and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of confession as printed in the bulletin in response. O Lord of the Advent, we admit that all things are yours when we bring our minds, our hands, our voices to worship. We bring to you what is yours. We know we do not serve you as we should, for the world is full of tension and violence. Give us the grace to love and serve you in the world. 
we confess that our goodwill to others falls apart when it's really tested. Surprise us again with your way of turning things around, your way of making things right. Through the coming of the child of Bethlehem, help us to love one another as you love us. Now, O oh Lord, hear our prayer as we silently confess our sins. Amen. Out of God's amazing love, God has extended grace to us in Jesus Christ. In Him we find forgiveness. We accept God's gift. We are forgiven. Let us joyfully praise God's name.
As we come to our time of prayer, I call your attention <clears throat> to the fact that we had three deaths this past week in the, in the church family. We want to remember these families that are dealing with grief at this time. And I call your attention to the fact that the memorial service for Freddie's Weidler will be held on January the 3rd. I hope we'll keep that before us and remember all these families in our prayer. Let us join together in prayer. O Lord of the Advent, God of the Incarnation, as your children we come into your holy presence. We come with thankful hearts in this season we call Christmas. We anticipate the joys of the birth of the Messiah but we're so aware of our sisters and brothers who experience the loneliness over the loss of loved ones and those who suffer from broken relationships, those who long for a closer walk with you, who are weighed down with concerns over health, over finances, over fears, over the future. We praise you, Lord, for your love, that love that reaches us and lifts us and redeems us. We thank you for your gift of grace and forgiveness and redemption that lifts us and restores us. Especially are we grateful for that when we focus again this, this time of the year on the birth of Christ, who came as our Redeemer. And we bring our concerns before you, Lord, concerns about the divided, warring natures, nations, and concerns about the influence the church is losing in the world. Concerns about disease and sufferings in all countries. And we, we, oh Lord, we need your intervention. And we pray for it. We remember those that have physical concerns, those that are facing surgery or treatment. We pray your blessing upon them and for your healing and for your answer through the miracle of modern medicine. We thank you for the message of the nativity, all wrapped up with peace and hope and joy and love. And we pray that you will call us to renewed glimpse of who we are as followers of Christ the Lord of all. We make our prayer in his name and for his sake. Amen. Our hymn is 110, Love Has Come.
want us to affirm our faith by using the, the Christmas creed as printed in the bulletin. I believe in Jesus Christ and in the beauty of the gospel that began in Bethlehem. I believe in him whose spirit glorified the little town of his coming on the shepherds of the sun and from whom the crowded end could find no room. I believe in him whom the kings of the earth ignored and the proud could never understand whose paths were among the common people, whose welcome came from the people of hungry hearts. I believe in him who proclaimed the love of God to be invincible, whose cradle was a mother's arms, whose home in Nazareth and love for its only wealth, who looked at humanity and made human weakness up to meet the strength of God. I acknowledge in Christ a faith that sees beyond our present evil, and I pray that this redemption may begin in us. Amen. Please be seated, and let us worship God with our tithes and offerings.
Lord, we're truly grateful for all the blessings you've bestowed upon us. The greatest gift of all we celebrate in Jesus Christ. And we give the, we bring these tithes and offerings back before you, praying that you would bless them and use them to meet the needs of your people to build your kingdom. Bless us, each gift and each giver, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Scripture from the New Testament this morning is from the Epistle of John, the first chapter, verses 4, 7 through 21. The fourth chapter, 7 through 21. John writes, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us at Christmas. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us. He sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us his spirit, and we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God abides in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to God, yet hates his brother or sister, is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Speak, Lord, words we need to hear. Give us your message, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Gifts are always big at Christmas. I heard about one husband gave his wife a leaf blower for Christmas. Conversation went something like this. What is that big bag under the tree there? Husband said, it's a gift. See, it has a ribbon on it. She looks in it and she said, it's a leaf blower. He said, yes, gas driven, five horsepower, one of the best. 
she said, am I supposed to be excited about that? He said, well, your best gift is God gave me to you. She said, uh uh, God doesn't do gag, does not do gag gifts. <laughs> I heard about one husband that gave his wife snow, a set of snow tires for Christmas. Irma Bombeck said it best. She said her strangest gift was someone gave her a gift certificate for a flu shot at Christmas. <laughs> God's greatest gift is love. That's what Christmas is about. I tremble thinking about preaching on love because it, that topic is so overused and sometimes worn thin. It's kind of like an old coin that's passed around. We don't really catch the true meaning of it. The core ethic of Christianity, though, is to love God and love each other because God loves us. It's interesting to think about when God wants to do something important, he sends a child. When he wanted to free the children of Israel out of Egypt, he sent Moses, who was hidden and after his birth and nursed to become the savior of his people at that time. When he wanted to emancipate slaves, he sent a child named Abraham, born in the backwoods, who became president, was able to do what God called him to do in that project. When he wanted a drum major for justice in the world, a child was born in Daddy King's home in Atlanta. When he wanted to show a new movement of love in the world, he sent Jesus. He died for us and taught us how to love. When I think of the topic of love, I think of what was said about Socrates many ages ago. One person observed this. When I hear Socrates speak, my soul is stirred. My eyes are filled with tears. And I blush for the trivialities of which I spend my days. And when we think about the love of God for us, we can be overwhelmed with how much it truly means to us in the depths of our being. For God is love. God loves and therefore God gives. That's what John 3.16 is all about. God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his, newly, his only begotten son. A new introduction of love in the world. God keeps sending us that message every Christmas. The love that he has for us. I heard about one man who was in love with his fiance and he had to go out of town for a year. So he wrote his fiance a love letter every day. She got 365 love notes. Interesting thing, she married the postman. <laughs> so he can never tell what can happen. But God's message to us keeps coming, reminding us of God's gracious love for us. Robert Fulgham, the one who wrote that all I ever learned, I needed to know, I learned in kindergarten, told about being, about hiding. He said he was working in his office and the kids outside were having a game of hide and seek and some little boy hid outside his window in a pile of leaves. And they kept looking for him, and he wanted to yell out the window, get found, kid. But he wouldn't. He said he thought of how he could get the kid out. He said finally it dawned on him what used to be another game was called sardines, in which the one who is it hides, and everybody else looks for him. And when they find him, they get in the hiding spot with him. And he said, that's the way it is with God. He said, God is the one who hides and we come looking. 
I don't know that God hides, but we seek him. And like the children, when we find him, we all get together as sardines, and we giggle and laugh until everyone is found. And we can celebrate God's love because we're with him. And that's how God loves us. God wanted us to know he loved us. And he sent Jesus. He sent Jesus with a purpose. God loves. He sent him reminding us, as he wrote in verse 9, God showed his love by sending us Jesus. God loves, and therefore we accept his love. His love affects us. It is his grace, that overwhelming grace. God sends his love wrapped in swaddling clothes for us to accept the gift that he gives us. Someone sent a, po a Christmas card that read this. Have you ever wondered how I got announced the greatest birth in human history to a handful of shepherds on a hillside and a few wise men from the east? Perhaps it was that they were quiet enough to listen, eager enough to know, and available enough to follow. We hesitate. But God finds us and calls us to love him. John wrote in verses 15 and 16 that to acknowledge Jesus in us and us in God is what God calls us to do and to be. The gift is given at Christmas. But it's not until we accept it that it becomes real for us. That's what Christmas is about, reminding us that God offers us the gift of Jesus Christ. And he calls us to acknowledge, to acknowledge in him that God finds us. We used to sing that little song, Into my heart, Lord Jesus, into my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in to stay. That's what Christmas invites us to do, to accept the Lord who is given as a babe, but who grows to become a Savior, a crucified Savior for us, that we might have life eternal and abundant. God finds us and shows us his love, and we are called to accept it. But then there's another step. God loves us, therefore we love. We love others. There's all kinds of, of love as we share with each other in life. But the one love that God gives us is an unchanging love. It loves us in spite of who we are and in spite of what we are. It's called agape, that self-giving love. And Jesus tells us, to have that big love for each other. It's a command. Jesus said, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. And John in this scripture reminds us the importance of loving each other as brothers and sisters. John reminds us of the fullness of that. Ernest Gordon, who wrote that book, the miracle over the River Kwai. Talked about the prison camp and the Japanese occupation and a group of Scottish soldiers were taken prisoners. and They were called and directed to build a railroad and it was digging day and night with poor food. And one day one of the shovels was missing and the commander came in with a gun, a pistol, and said, who took that one shovel? Who hid it? Nobody stepped forth. And he pulled out his pistol and said, I will start shooting each of you one by one until we find who confesses to that. And finally, one of the Scottish soldiers stepped forward and he took a shovel, the commander took a shovel and beat him to death in front of the rest of them. 
Well, when they took his corpse back to the, to the count, they found that indeed all the shovels were there. There was a miscount. And this one man, who happened to be a Christian, had stepped out and saved the rest of them. And Ernest Gordon said a whole new sweep came over that camp that because of what this one man had done, they began to care about each other and love each other and do things for each other. And the whole atmosphere, the spirit picked up. And even when the army came to, to free them, they stood between their captors and the ones that were freeing them to forgive them because of that. And he went on in this book to talk about how that one act saved so many and changed so many lives because of the love that was given. You see, as John wrote, anyone who loves God must love his brother and sister. Several years ago, up in South Carolina, a little boy named Richard Ballinger was asked by his mother to polish her shoes. She said, I want you to help me. I'm overwhelmed getting ready for Christmas. And we're going to church. Would you please polish my shoes? I'll give you a quarter. So he polished his shoes. This was old days when quarter was something. <laughs> he polished his shoes. And then Sunday on Christmas Day, she went to put them on. There was a lump in her shoe. And she reached down, and it was a quarter wrapped up in a note. And the note, it said, I done it for love. I done it for love. When we come to Christmas and observe the beauty and the joy and the celebration, don't forget the words of Jesus. I done it for love. I done it for love. Let's pray. Lord, we give you thanks. We thank you for your love, for your care, for your gifts to us. Oh, Lord, we pray you would help us learn to love each other and learn to love those that have needs and learn to show that love to a needy world. We must do it through you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is People Look East, hymn 105.
now go into God's world and know that God goes before you. And wherever you find yourselves, you're there by God's appointment, not by accident, but in the providence of God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.